good afternoon. <laughs> um, you'll hear some toddler noises, that's unavoidable. <laughs> but she's going to be very quiet, like mostly quiet, I think. <laughs> uh, thank you for um, having us here and for letting us have Aida in the, in the talk. Um, so yeah, no touching. <laughs> It's kind of what we tell Ida. <laughs> Hands off. <laughs> Rethinking game controllers in AR. Um, so, hi, I'm Jyoti Bishnoi. Um, a mom, uh, a technologist, been, uh, like, I think forever. <laughs> um, right now, we make... Uh, augmented reality games. Our goal is to bring joy to learning. Uh, learning as, as we see right now in schools um, or, um, uh, or even um, as a concept for, uh, for kids or uh, grown-ups. Learning's intent of keeping your mind curious is somewhere lost in the um, in the works and to dos of uh, of a classroom. So um, so we are uh, working towards bringing it back, uh, making it more joyful. And our medium um, is games. We we think um, uh, as you might all agree, this is a game group, um, that games are uh, a very engaging way to, um, to learn something, to, to uh, understand, understand something. And for, for making a good game, we need immersion. So games need immersion. And immersion needs suspension of disbelief. It's um, it's like you are in this world in a different world, and you're voluntarily in a in a state of um, you know you're suspending your disbelief um, for for the for the reason that it's it's giving you so much uh, fun, challenge, and and a high. Um, so yeah, so. As uh, as we as we want more immersion, as we want to target more suspension of disbelief, even though for uh, for a well-designed game, it might port me into its own world. It might bring me into a into a zone where I start looking at everything, everything solution as portal, like walking down something and about to miss a, a subway, and I'm like, oh, if I could have a portal. Um, but even then, while playing games, my interactions are via controllers. And interactions, uh, my interaction with the game and the elements of the game is what can possibly pull me out or maybe take me deeper into the illusion. Um, and Making games in augmented reality, our biggest challenge is interactions right now. Um, our intuitions over the past so many years have been built with the usage of flat screens. Um, we have very less exposure, or at least our intuition building was not, uh, was not coming from um, a 3D experience or a, uh, or a virtual experience of playing games. So, um, so my interactions um, are uh, challenging, because as we see in a lot of games that are coming up, and even for us this is true, that we started with trying out a lot of 2D gestures. The gestures seemed simple and the obvious choice for, um, for making, um, making the interactions um, interesting and intuitive for the player. 
as an example, tapping on a virtual ob object in 3D um, seems like, yeah, in, especially in mobile AR, you're, um, you're holding the phone and even though on the other side um, there's a virtual 3D world that has been populated, um, it, does, uh, it does make you uh, believe that the tapping gesture would work. But it, it worked fine on a flat phone, um, about fine on a flat phone screen, but now it deceives us. It's deceptive. It, um, you're, you're holding phone with, a, with one hand and you're trying to tap with the other is, is the first uh, and foremost problem that you'd start facing. Um, your hand can shake. Your perception of depth is, is totally dependent on you managing to calculate um, how far is the object, how close are you, how close does it need you to be with the, um, with the fact that you're also juggling with one hand um, in the phone and also trying to get to the object. So, so it's, um, it's, it seems simple when you think of using it, but it um, kind of starts confusing you in practice. Controllers, uh, for that matter, have been an indirection till now. They have been our um, means for translating our intent, taking, um, taking the step that we want to take in the game uh, is always been via a controller. And if, um, uh, till now, unless, unless the game starts stepping into your world, we have always, um, for as long as we've played games, it's most, in most of the cases this is true, that we step into the game world. We move towards the game world. Um, but with augmented reality, virtual reality, the, the whole mixed reality experiences, um, there is a possibility to have the game step into your world. And um, what does that mean? It to begin with, it's, it's about perspective. Um, with augmented reality, your position, your motion, your orientation can be tracked, and it can be used as, uh, as a means to interact with, uh, with the game that you're playing. It, um, it also, for example, lets me paint in 3D, it, um, you can physically run faster than the zombies. It's making you move around. It's, uh, it's immersive. It's, it opens the door and you walk into space. Um, by, by the use of your position, your orientation, your motion, uh, which uh, is technically um, possible now. So, so using that, and using the potential of um, moving around, uh, entering new worlds uh, while being in your world is, is what we, uh, we learned that uh, we can focus more on, uh, is something that makers or all um, game enthusiasts as all of us can explore more towards. Yeah, so it's immersive, it encourages moving about, brings the game world into our world. Um, it's, um, even for virtual reality, we, we sometimes wonder that you're kind of porting yourself into, um, uh, into the game world. But here with uh, augmented reality games and with the new uh, possibilities of interactions, you have the opportunity to to be one with the game uh, while not being disconnected from your reality. But there's a catch, don't forget. Field of view is limited near proximity triggers. So you, uh, when orientation or perspective is, is the means for gestures or interactions, uh, you getting closer 
to the trigger object is, is what is the method that you follow. And as you get closer, um, this proximity can limit your field of view and hence it again adds a challenge of how will you now interact with the rest of the world and like you have to come back and that itself is a, is a switch you were trying to uh, avoid to begin with. So that's another challenge but then there are uh, interesting workarounds for that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's one um, uh, way to have controls uh, which can make the game, which can bring the game to your world. My object is my control. So um, real world objects can be now tracked with uh, object recognition um, and world position plus the real world objects that you have in your hand or around you um, can be used to interact with virtual worlds. We have um, we have personally tried doing this in a very in a, um, in a scenario where we do storytelling for our daughter, and um, we used to do a lot of puppets for excuse me for her, and um, with with this um, using object as a control, we we started trying out a technique of using hand puppets to interact with virtual worlds. Um, for us, we kind of did a hack solution of making uh, crayon worlds and porting them to 3D and then interacting with them using hand puppets. But, uh, but it, it opens so much more uh, opportunity because uh, the real world objects um, give you that sense of it's physical, it's tactile, you, you build a connection with the object and with the memories you create while you interact uh, this object with the virtual world. Um, I have a small demo that I'd like to show you. It's, it's a very small gesture, but um, so this is a real world puppet. It's a real puppet uh, of, a, say, a, we call it Mufasa. It's like, with as I move my hand, it's the sun is rising or it's setting. <laughs> it's a part of th a story that we tell her, um, and, um, and it's fun for her to see that. Okay, there's a small jungle crayon drawing there, and then there's this sun. And Mufasa woke up, and like we're making all kinds of sounds, and like roar, and like uh, he um, it wakes up and. Uh, then the sun rises, and you can hear more uh, sounds from um, other objects in the world. So, uh, so this this is a very small example, but then it it tells us how your real world objects have uh, have the capability to uh, to bring uh, so much more storytelling and immersive experiences than uh, you know we we are used to doing like the logistic or the effort of creating these worlds itself would be so uh, so big without having the virtual possibility of crossing the barriers so um, that yeah it makes interactions more and it enables uh, persistent imagination uh, connected to the objects so um, it, you kind of kind of build um, a connection with the object and the imagination um, portal that it opened for you. It widens your mind. It can act as a bridge between the virtual and real world. Yes. Um, again, don't forget. Physical objects can be logistically cumbersome because you're, again, um, holding them in your hand and uh, difficult to hold. You can, uh, you are doing the gesture while holding the object or maybe it's a part of how the object moves um, and that leads to the changes in a uh, virtual world. Um, it's, I'd say it's a much lesser challenge than uh, you know, it's it's a small cost as compared to the kind of uh, storytelling or 
our games or experiences that we can build. And I'm sure we can find interesting solutions to that too. Um, my face is my control. So um, AR can track my gaze, my eyebrows, blink, mouth, face orientation, all of it, and um, using it to interact with virtual worlds and using it to perform uh, activities in the games or experiences that we create um, is, is, again, another uh, level of uh, bringing game to your world or being one with the, uh, with the game. And also um, breaking to bits the, the fact that um, those moments of interaction could break my illusion. So you being in the game so much that you itself are starting to um, be part of the controls is, um, is something that can um, help us uh, forego those, uh, those cracks that the controllers um, possibly had. Yeah, it lets me navigate a menu with my gaze. You can drive a car with frowns and smiles. Um, and your frowns and smiles are really going to work instead of <laughs> the, the moments we have while driving. Um, yeah, <laughs> you can vacuum with your mouth. Well, uh, you wouldn't really suck the dust, but um, it, it's a good exercise. <laughs> I'd like to demo that one. <laughs> Yeah, we'll just take a moment to start the demo. Uh, we'll try to demo uh, the... Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, it works. That's what we want. <laughs> That's what we want to right hear. <laughs> so here's what the control is. I, uh, it's looking at me. When I open my mouth, it shows me a yellow dot, meaning I'm trying to do a gesture, but it's not there yet. And when I try to suck dust in, that becomes red. Let's do it. Let's clean up the room. A little more. <laughs> Let's get the cups. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's probably the <laughs> That one's just trying to go. <laughs> no, it's one. probably the shadow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Let's try the gift box. <laughs> it says no. <laughs> oh, the balls went in. <laughs> Some billiards balls, right? Oh, <laughs> 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 right. uh, let's see if we have anything else here. Ooh. Uh -huh. Whoa. <laughs> oh, I won that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a meditative exercise, I would say, <laughs> to just clean up. <laughs> you had a question or something? <laughs> He'd love to. <laughs> He's always doing it. <laughs> yeah, so with the face being the control, um, it, it allows for hands-free interaction. And um, that takes away the, the cumbersome uh, juggling between the phone and the gesture and the object, because um, cause you volunteered to be the object. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, it allows both trigger actions and continuous control. But don't forget, facial gestures are hard to sustain for long periods of time.
like how long can he really keep doing <laughs> this <laughs> so um so then we uh come to my body is my control cuz cuz you have far too many parts to use then <laughs> AI tracks my hands, shoulders, legs, joints. It lets me add special effects to dance moves and play drums mid-air. Uh, <laughs> well, that one's very interesting, I'd like to. Yeah, we'd like to demo it. <laughs> Let's do it together. Uh, hold this one. I can hold it, it's fine, yeah. Let's do it again, this thing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Can I uh, but you don't block the Oh, it won't. Ah, oh, okay. Don't block the yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be a little far. Wait, that's not the Yeah. Or should I just come that side? This is good. Is this okay? Can everybody see yeah? the screen? Can everybody see the screen? Yeah. Okay. All right, so here oh we no. go. It's a little too, many too much information. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Mm -hmm. All right. I just want to skip. I probably try from here. Yeah, this is fine. This yeah. Is fine. Okay? Yeah. yeah. So you can, you can see I'm there. I'm here. Yeah. That's all just the magic. <laughs> and let, so this is an app. Yeah, it's I really feeling like a magic show. I'm interacting <laughs> with my body. So I need, I can't see that screen. Um, so I need a way to interact, which is audible. So that's, that's my fine. cue, that my check, everything's working. And now we can start playing. So once we start playing, I'm supposed to play drums. Let's. He has drums? Okay, yeah, I have drums here. Um, this side, this side. Okay, and then there's some snares. <laughs> so why don't we um, this time? Oh, actually, we could just. Oh, sorry. You want to make some music? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's a better way. There's a better way. So, so oh, I'll let's I'll do it. Start. Yeah. In recording mode. Uh, because of this lag and the lag from me to phone, the speaker, to audio, to you. Um, that's not as live as we'd like it to be. But this time, let's record a beat. But like you can design some so we'll beats and then they'll. Beat. Maybe this is my one drum and then an empty beat, which is just a wait. That is we did something. Shh. Let's play it. Yeah, if you like that kind of music, <laughs> you can make it. <laughs> so uh, it could be any any amount of time. Uh, you can make it three three by four, five by four, uh, whatever beats you want to make. And uh, you can uh, so for example, let's do a three. Let's do a three. Beat. He's doing this for his body, so that's why he does that. So this one is going to be a small beat, but you can. You just do that on the background. And, and then maybe a, a longer one. 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 Two. Three. Empty. One. Snare. Empty. Yep. This one. And play. Something. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you need it? Yeah, so it um, makes for a visceral full body experience. <laughs> Allows for um, complex gestures, high degrees of freedom, and um, 
yeah, complex just is a mix of uh, things. You can start thinking about how to make a piano, <laughs> how to play a piano using this. Yeah, but don't forget, body pose recognition only works with back camera on iOS as of now. So that kind of limits us in terms of the uh, devices you can support and um, um, audience, as in people who can play or would play uh, what you make. But then we know this is ever evolving. So it'll get better in terms of supporting devices. Pardon me? Oh, uh, so that's just because we did in <laughs> iOS. So it's not to say that not on Android. In iOS, it's just the back camera. Uh, in Android, yeah, there is uh, also a possibility. Yes. <laughs> oh, this is just an Easter egg. <laughs> <laughs> it really is life. What she's doing <laughs> is making the music happen. <laughs> she's making us do it all on airports and everything now. <laughs> such a nap time yeah. helper. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> so what we um, finally <laughs> come to or conclude, I am the controller, you are the controller. Um, with us being the controller, the game steps into our world. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much. This was very nice.